Hello everybody, my name is Paul Tate and in this video we're going to look at travelling with your DJI Mavic Mini. So I've just got back from Costa Rica and I'm going to share with you uh, any things we need to think about before we go, uh, all the problems I encountered and uh, what I did and didn't like about the DJI Mavic Mini. And in case you're wondering why I've got this big bushy beard, I'm going axe rowing this weekend and I want to be dressed like a lumberjack. Okay, let's get started. <laughs> Okay guys, so the first thing I'm going to say is before you even uh, book the ticket to go flying anywhere, uh, check the law in that country. Um, for example, I wanted to go to Morocco. I went there a few years ago to do photography and it was a really great place to go. It's a short distance from the UK so it's a nice place to go with a really different culture. I wanted to go out there and fly a drone over the desert where well, with the camels below. And when I looked into doing this I actually found out it was illegal to take a drone into Morocco. Uh, they will confiscate it from you and you'll be lucky to get it back. And you'll also get a fine as well, um, <laughs> so I'm going to stay well away from there with a drone. Uh, so when I looked at Costa Rica, it's actually a very similar laws to the UK. Um, you're not allowed to fly at night time, um, but things like uh, you're not allowed to go above 120 metres, you have to keep line of sight of it, uh, a certain distance away from buildings, and uh, just general common sense things. Now I didn't see any laws that said you have to register your drone if it's over 250 grams so I would imagine you'd be able to fly out there with the propeller guards on. Having said that they take up a lot of space in the luggage and I didn't think it was worth it. Now the next thing we're going to look at is uh, what we're taking with us and how we're going to pack it. So the first thing I'm going to say is that the Fly More combo is really good for doing this. Um, here I've got the, uh, the case it comes in. It's really handy to have it, and actually most of the time the drone was kept in here. So if you didn't get the Fly More combo, it'd be well worth looking into a case uh, to hold the drone that will keep it safe as you travel. Um, if you've got to be moving around a lot, you might be running through the airport, you can be putting it in your bag, picking it up and down. It's going to take a lot of battery in, so a nice hot case would be ideal. The next thing I want to talk about is the batteries. I'm going to go into more depth for this later because there's uh, different laws and regulations for travelling with these. But uh, for now, I'll just say how I've packed them. Um, I've charged them and put them in the uh, carry case, uh, which is really useful. And I've got one in the drone as well. And as I say, I'll go into more detail with the batteries later. Now, obviously, make sure uh, you've got everything you need, like the remote, your phone, your cables. Um, I think it's really important to make sure when you're travelling, again for the same reasons of having a case, is to have the uh, gimbal protector on the drone, uh, just to make sure that your gimbal's not going to go everywhere and get bashed about as you're running around and moving around a lot. I also took a set of spare propellers and the screwdriver. Now what I'll say about the screwdriver is that where it's uh, small and pointed, a sharp piece of metal, they may confiscate this from you, so I actually took this in my luggage and kept it well away from my hand luggage. Now obviously I took my mobile phone with me as well, and I also took a uh, separate battery charger to make sure that my phone always had charge uh, when I needed it. Now where I live in the UK and we were flying over to Central America, I had to change the uh, typical 3 pin plugs uh, into the 2 pins, so we made sure we had the right adapter to do that. I also took uh, this charger with me, it's just a plug with uh, two USB ports in the bottom, so I can either charge the battery pack and the drone at the same time, or uh, one of the batteries in my phone. Uh, so it came in really useful and it was really handy. Another thing that's worth considering is how much footage you've got to take. I did take a 256 uh, gigabyte card which was plenty but I also took a 32 gigabyte just as backup and I did actually end up using it um, where I was flying in some windy conditions. Uh, at the end of the holiday I decided to switch the cards out just in case my Mavic got taken away. I was pretty sure it wouldn't but I'd hate to lose all that footage. It would also be worth considering taking a uh, hard drive to back them up. Um, I didn't do that personally but it's nice to know when you're out that you've got your footage backed up in two places. Now, as I said before, I did take this backpack out and I would highly recommend taking one with you. This one's a bit heavy but it was really comfortable, it's got a nice padded back, but it might be worth looking for something light to carry all your stuff with. Um, I'm a photographer as well, so I had my camera and a few lenses in there, so um, this actually worked really well to hold my lenses, the drone and the camera, and also anything extra I needed, like a drink or some food if we were going out on a journey. Now that's just about everything we're going to want to pack. I will say when I went for the airport I felt it was really important to have the drone on me and also you have to have the batteries on you, we'll go into more detail with that later. Um, just because you know it's safe, uh, when I travelled with British Airways before and I went to Peru I got to the destination but my luggage didn't and it would have been really stressful not knowing where it was. Now the thing I keep going on about is the batteries. 
So um, if you look at the laws and regulations on batteries and uh, the guidelines they give you, I would go onto whatever airline you're going with and uh, go onto their website and just have a look and see what their regulations are with the batteries. Now when I looked online, with British Airways you're allowed to take four batteries per person and uh, you're allowed two spare batteries for any given device. Uh, now with um, the DJI Mavic Mini, um, I obviously had one in the Mavic and uh, two in the, uh, the packing case. You do have to have them packed securely. Now I personally feel that having it in the drone is nice and secure and also obviously in the battery case is going to be secure as well. And then bear in mind we're putting this into the DJI uh, bigger case, uh, they should be really safe in there. Now I've heard some people say uh, you should drain the battery slightly, uh, maybe to 30 to 50% and this will make sure that if there is a problem it's not going to combust. And also you can get LiPo bags to put them in which again will stop any risk of them actually setting a light which, they, which has happened before but um, it's very rare. Um, I personally wanted mine fully charged, it's nice to know when you get to a country um, you haven't got to search for somewhere to charge your batteries uh, before you fly. Now it's a really important point to stress that batteries have to go in your hand luggage and they cannot go in your suitcase for safety reasons. Now another thing I'd say is it said that you have to have all the uh, label intact on the battery so they, if you do get stopped to customs uh, they can see exactly what you've got and know the laws about it. And again, on the uh, British Airways website, they said to print off the battery section if you are going to be taking them, uh, just so that you can show them your rights and that you have looked and you've known what to do. Um, I personally just took a picture on my phone of a screenshot of the web page, um, but as I say, I had no problems actually getting through the airport whatsoever. Uh, I took another camera with me, which had uh, two batteries in. I had my phone and I had the power bank. So um, I actually put my camera, phone and the power bank in one tray when I was going through the x-ray machine and I put my drone in another tray when I was going through the x-ray machine so um, nothing came up, there was no problems there and uh, if anything did happen my girlfriend was going with me and she had spare space with batteries so she could have taken some of them with her and again when I got to Costa Rica the other end and I put it through the machines uh, there was no trouble, no one raised an eyebrow, it was absolutely fine Another thing to bear in mind with the batteries is if you're going somewhere cold, uh, they won't last quite as long. So um, if you don't have a fly more combo and you're going somewhere cold, it would be a good idea to look at getting extra batteries. Another thing you may want to think about is getting your drone insured. Uh, my drone was actually insured by our uh, house insurance, but if you don't have that cover, it may be worth looking to get in travel insurance. Uh, when I looked into this, it was really expensive for me because I was travelling as a family and I wanted year cover. So putting on gadget cover or um, something that covers an item of £500 was actually really expensive. But when I looked, if you were travelling by yourself, it put the price up about £10 if, you're going for like, uh, if I was going to Costa Rica for two weeks by myself and just wanted that covered. So you're pretty much ready to go now. Uh, you may want to consider putting a, a label on there with your name and your number, uh, with your international number on so people know uh, how to get hold of you if your drone does blow away or you get a fly away. And it's also worth making sure it's updated before you go because you don't want the stress of having to find somewhere where you can download the latest update. And it's also worth checking it over and making sure that the propellers are clean and are in good condition. I do actually have a video on how to change the propellers of your Mavic Mini and I'll put the link in the top right hand corner of the screen now. So that's going to be everything you need to think about before you fly. Something else I will mention is I did actually take a pair of shorts with really big pockets in so I could put my remote in one pocket and the drone in the other pocket so I could have easy access to it if I needed it. But what I will say is that I never actually took advantage of that. Um, it was so easy just having it in the backpack in the case and then just getting it out when I wanted to fly it. Now the place I feel the uh, DJI really excel is it's just so portable, so easy to get around. Uh, the batteries are small, the drone's small, it's nice and light. I could put it in with my other camera equipment really easily and it didn't really um, detract from the holiday at all. Now where the weight and size is a really huge advantage, there was also a bit of a disadvantage to that as well. I found that uh, some days it was a bit windy, I felt a bit reluctant to put it up. Now if we look at this uh, footage here, this was taken at a volcano. Uh, there was a ridge around the edge of us which had a bit of protection from the wind, but if I went above the ridge I felt it would have been really windy. So I was a bit worried about pushing it up too high. Um, there also, I didn't want to fly over the volcano because I knew that I wouldn't be able to get it back if anything did go wrong. So I did feel that this limited me just to going up and down and uh, I couldn't get the exact footage I want, although I am happy with this footage. 
Now another thing that caught me off guard is that the air is thinner at higher altitude. So if you are going anywhere with mountains or if you're going anywhere just um, high above sea level, uh, where the air is thinner, it's going to take up more battery power because the drone is going to have to work harder to stay in the sky. So again, when I was at the volcano and it was saying the braking distance wasn't as good and um, it was going to take up more power and it was really windy and then if I raised it too high I really didn't want it to get taken. So it's something you just have to think about, be aware of and just be careful with. Now another thing that became apparent is a lot of places we were staying were relatively cheap. Uh, this usually meant that it didn't feel very secure and they didn't have safes in the room. So most of the time I had my Mavic Mini on me um, in my backpack with all my camera equipment because I just didn't feel safe leaving it in certain places. Uh, there was one place in the jungle in particular that just had mosquito nets and I really didn't feel I wanted to leave it in there. So uh, when we went on a tour I took it with me and I went into the rainforest and uh, the rainforest lived up to its name and it actually poured down and it soaked through my bag. Uh, bearing in mind that the uh, Mavic Mini was in a bag, under some clothes, under my camera equipment, in a hard case, it still did get a bit damp. This brings me on to the second problem I encountered, which was actually pretty huge. Uh, the lens steamed up inside, so I couldn't just wipe off the mist. Um, this really did have a massive effect on the footage, and it basically made it unusable for a few days. Where we were in a really hot, humid country, just leaving it somewhere warm actually didn't really dry it out. So initially, I did put it in the car and put the aircon on, and this did clear the mist off for about 5 or 10 minutes. But again, as soon as I put it up in the air, about two minutes later, it would cloud over and the footage would be completely ruined. So I got around this by putting the aircon on in the room we were in, uh, putting it upside down and leaving it on the windowsill in the light with direct sunlight hitting it. And after about a few hours of doing that, the, actually, the lens dried out and it was fine for the rest of the holiday. So what I'd like to say is that if you are taking it somewhere where it's raining and uh, there's a chance of it getting wet, I would wrap up the case in a plastic bag and make sure it's completely watertight and no water can get in whatsoever. Now another big problem I had when I was out there is it actually took a really long time to charge. Now I think this was because I was going from uh, 240 volts uh, in the UK over to uh, 110 in uh, Costa Rica. So um, this did slow down the charging I'm pretty sure. Um, but when I got back I also found out that one of my cables was a bit broken. So I don't know if it was entirely that or if it was just the difference. So um, if you do go out there and uh, you have it charging, uh, just bear in mind it may take a bit longer. Uh, luckily for me, I did actually have a spare uh, micro USB cable and I was charging it in the drone and in the pack at the same time. And I did find that really the only way of reliably charging the battery was to charge it through the drone and not through the battery pack. Now let's think about what actually happened when I was actually filming with the drone. So I'd get to certain places, for example I really wanted to fly this in a national park. Uh, so I took it down there and uh, when we were going around we had a tour guide and I asked him if he would mind if I got the drone out and flew it. Uh, he did actually point out that I wasn't allowed to fly the drones in the national park, which I was unaware of. I had read uh, when I researched it before that you weren't allowed to fly it um, around uh, like uh, presidential buildings, prisons and other structures. It did not say online, or I couldn't find online, that you weren't allowed to fight in the national parks. So this was a bit upsetting, uh, but you've got to you've got to respect that, and I didn't fly it in the parks. Another thing to think about before you get it out is also to think of, just make sure you're safe. You're in a place you don't know. Uh, there were some places where it might have been a bit sketchy for me to get it out, and I didn't really know uh, what the area was like, so I decided not to fly. Um, I also kept, also where I kept it in my backpack, um, Nobody could see I actually had a drone on me at the time. Again, it's just another way of keeping safe. So just be aware of your surroundings. In Costa Rica, I actually found the locals were really welcoming and uh, they actually were really interested in the drone. And uh, there was actually no issues at all. Um, in fact, uh, I had a young boy come up to me and uh, had took a lot of interest and actually let him fly it for a few minutes. And it made his day. So the chances are you probably won't have any trouble. But if you do, I'll just get it down straight away and uh, just get yourself safe. So now you found somewhere safe, people are happy for you to have your drone out, you've obeyed the laws, everything's going well, you're going to get your drone out. Uh, the first thing I'd recommend doing is just taking it off a few feet off the ground and leaving it there for about 20 to 30 seconds, um, making sure that you've calibrated the compass and calibrated the IMU. So the reason for this is obviously where you've got a long way, you don't want the drone getting confused about where it is and doing a flyaway. So by taking it off a few feet off the ground, uh, you know that it's not going to get away too far if it does decide to go for a flyaway. And once you've done this and you've landed it, take it back off again, you know you're pretty much going to be safe to have the drone go wherever you want it to go. 
Now I know this is law, um, but I really would recommend keeping li a line of sight of it at all times. Um, I do this anyway, but where I was somewhere I didn't know very well, I, it was just comforting to know that I could find the drone and always see it and know it was safe. Now I remember where I was flying on the beach at some points, it was a bit windy, and uh, I saw a, a flock of birds flying over the sea and I really wanted to fly out and catch up with them. So um, I put it up to full speed and I went out to get to where they were going. Uh, now I did this without thinking, uh, checking the battery or the wind conditions and it was actually quite windy on the way back and the battery was fairly low and um, I managed to get it back with a low battery but it was quite worrying so when you're out there just do take into account the wind and don't forget what you're doing. Um, I do have a video on about how the wind affected the DJI Mavic Mini, I'll drop a link in the uh, top right hand corner now. Now what I want to say is I was really impressed with the performance of the Mavic Mini. It was really great for travelling, it was really light, and uh, where I usually carry a lot of photographic equipment I didn't even notice the difference in weight having the Mini with me. I also found even where it is a bit windy, it still takes really good footage, and um, this, this uh, shot here of the birds flying across, I did get a weak signal for a bit, but I pushed through it, and um, although on the phone it played back a bit glitchy, the final footage was nice and smooth. So overall I was really happy with the performance, uh, the quick shots are really useful, it's nice and smooth footage and uh, it's a great little drone. So that's pretty much it for this video, I've gone over everything uh, we'd want to check before we get on the flight and um, the problems I encountered and I uh, just want to say it is, it's generally a really great drone for travelling. If you do want to see the footage I took from Costa Rica, um, I'll drop a link to that video in the top right hand corner now. Um, I really enjoyed taking it and I had a lot of fun. Now what I will say on the subject of fun, and I can be particularly bad at this when I'm actually taking photographs, is uh, make sure you make time just to enjoy where you are and live in the moment. I spend so long behind my camera sometimes that I kind of forget where I am. So it's just, uh, just enjoy yourself and have a good time. Now, now when I tried living in the moment, uh, my partner went off for a walk, my daughter was asleep, and I just sat on the beach and I was just taking in the sun and uh, just enjoying the view. Uh, when I was doing this, I noticed a little hole in the sand and a creature came out and went back in. Now, I couldn't resist, I went back behind the camera. I set it up and after nine minutes it popped back out again. So I want to ask, uh, what creature do you think would come out of this hole? Um, if you post the uh, answers in the comment section down below, um, I'll let you know in next week's video and I'll actually show you the video of it coming out. So that's it for this one guys, I hope to see you in the next one.